Should I just let it go? Just see what You're happens. Good. We're good? Are we, does it do a countdown? It just says live. We're live! <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, Trina here from Primal Life Organics, and I am with Nicole from Yoga Square here in Highland Square mm -hmm. in Ohio. And, um, you know, it's really cool because Nicole shares a passion with me, yeah. and um, we're both nurses mm -hmm. that have sort of branched out. I don't want to say stepped away because we're both still, still nurses. Working, right? And I think once you're a nurse, you're always a nurse. Mm -hmm. And there's a testimony of personality and dedication and the type of person and the things that you love um, about nursing. But we have both stepped away and done other things. And so tell us a little bit about Yoga Squared yeah. and what you're going to do here today. Okay. So I'm Nicole from Yoga Squared. Um, we just opened in December. So we're a new yoga studio. We're in Highland Square in that neighborhood. Um, so we have hot classes, we have all different, a variety of classes, probably about 30 a week. Um, so I have a history of being a nurse, like um, Trina said, and I just decided to do something new. And I found that I read a lot of books um, when I decided I wanted to open a business because I had no business experience whatsoever. Um, my boyfriend had a little bit, but... Um, you sound just, like me. Yeah. And nurses don't. There's no, yeah. there's no business, there's no business. School, no. schooling and training or anything yeah. like that. So, yeah. yeah. So I just read books, and mostly what I focused on was actually changing um, my mindset as opposed to learning how things worked because I knew that would take way too long. Um, I just decided to start to adjust the way I was thinking about my life and the direction my life was heading in, and I started to see like shifts happen immediately. So I'm just here, and this will really be like an open format if anyone has questions. Um, so just talk a little bit about that. You know what's really cool, and I always say uh, – um, this is just an extension of my nursing career. Mm -hmm. and, and the same thing, oh, yeah. you're still taking care of people. Yeah. You're still um, advocating for health. Mm -hmm. You're just doing it in a different setting. Yep. And it, yoga is perfect because it's just a nurse, an extension of your mm -hmm. nursing career. Just like my Primal Life Organics is an extension of my nursing right. career. So I'm going to let you take the, take the show. Yeah. And she's going to talk about changing your mindset and how that can actually change your life. And I'm a total believer of that as well. Yeah. So go for it. All right. So as I said, um, I really honestly had no experience whatsoever in business when I started thinking about opening a studio. Um, my boyfriend and I were considering this together. He had a lot of experience in the online business sphere, but neither of us had ever opened any sort of a brick and mortar um, business. So actually the first, the very first place I looked at um, in Highland Square ended up being where I would then open my studio. And I just kind of had a good feeling about it when I walked in the door, even though there were wires hanging down from the ceiling, like it was completely not what you would imagine um, a yoga studio to look like. So I ended up working with a realtor and I just, she helped me so much. Um, and I started realizing like if I believe that this can work out and if I really think that the people that come into my life are going to be good for me and have my best interest at heart and really help me, then I think that's how this is going to work out for me, even though I personally um, don't really have the experience to be doing this. So I found that the realtor that I worked with um, was very experienced, and I didn't even know what I needed to happen with the space. I really didn't know what I could what I could do versus what the management company could do and this and that, and she just completely took over. and. Um, she helped me basically get everything that I needed when it came to the space and made it really possible for us to open in a short period of time. So I looked at the space over the summer and then just over a couple months we worked everything out with the lease and in December we opened after like a couple months of just kind of working things out and I found that it was just moving along like really easy. Like I had previously always thought to myself it would be so hard to open a business um, having worked for other people my entire life, I thought that was a different type of person that would own a business, that I was not the type to be able to do something on my own. But um, I just started reading books. Um, you Are a Badass was like a favorite book that I read, and that really got me there. I mean, just from reading um, about how to shift um, the way you think about things and the, the mindset that you have, that you can start manifesting things and allowing things to work in your favor. And over time, I found that really, like, every single person that I met with was the best person that I could meet with. And it was just such an amazing experience. Um, my realtor ended up introducing me to a woman who worked at a bank um, just to talk, like, strictly about, like, financial things. But this woman ended up being um, actually, like, the director of the Women's Business Network in this area in Northeast Ohio. So 
I started going to meetings for the Women's Business Network, and through them, I met a mentor who helped me a lot along my way, who I would have never met or I would have never known she existed had it not been for my realtor and just feeling that things would work out. So um, that's really kind of how my experience went. And I just started talking to myself basically every day, even about, even in little small ways, like I'm going to have a good day today. And like this meeting with this particular person is going to go well. And then I found that that things just started to shift in my favor. Um, whereas previously, like as a nurse, I would walk into work and think I'm gonna have a bad day. Like I haven't had a bad day for a while. So like today's the day that I'm definitely, things are gonna be horrible today. And I started even like doing kind of experiments with myself. Like on my way into work, I would just tell myself, you're gonna have a good day. Like today's gonna be a good day as opposed to this negative stuff that I had been telling myself basically for eight years. Um, and I really found that it was working and I wouldn't have believed that something so, it sounds silly, um, could ever be that effective, but that was, that's kind of my, my story. So I wanna, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to chime in. What would be your advice yeah. for people um, as far as changing their mindset? What's one of the ways that you think or give them some sort of something that they can do? Right, um, right. So I found that honestly reading books about having a positive mindset was how I, like how things really started for me. So um, I went on vacation, honestly, like right before kind of things heated up with my business. And I was just reading like all of these books about like having a positive mindset. And it just started to make me think in a different way. So every day when I woke up, um, instead of maybe like looking at Facebook or doing something else that that might not have been helping me get where I needed to go, I would pick up a book and read a little bit. And it wasn't even like hardcore business books or anything like that. That was just not the, the tactic that I took to kind of get where I needed to go. Um, and then just like starting to see like, does this work? And cause you need that reinforcement. Um, and so it was even with small things like, oh my gosh, I was like, this happened with this particular patient, but I had a really positive mindset toward it and it worked out better than what I thought it would. So once I started to see things work a little bit, that helped me kind of transition into the bigger stuff like getting a loan and doing the, like things that were were more challenging or that I knew less about, but I had already been talking to myself for so long for months about how things could work out and there's no reason why I can't do something that I want to do in the same manner that so many people you know, in the past have turned their lives into something different. So. Do you find that today it's easier for you to be positive than, yeah, like it's, it's become more of a way of life? Because mm -hmm, initially sure. I'm sure it was really hard. I know, you know, I do a lot about mindset as well. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it, it's not super easy at first. You have to consciously talk to oh, yourself yeah. and tell yourself, yeah. you know, that's the wrong attitude. Uh -huh. I've got to change my attitude. If I change my attitude, Everything changes around you because people respond totally. to the energy you're putting out. Totally. So I don't know if you want to speak about. Yeah, and I heard that a lot too when I was meeting with people. Just that you're, you know, you're so positive, and like I'm just really attracted to like the way that you're talking to me or the way that that you present yourself. And not like I had, I don't think I was ever like a super negative person, but I had just never put any intention or any thought into the way that I was interacting or what the outcome would be if well, I changed yeah, my Yeah, and we're bombarded every day yeah. with negativity. Yeah. Everything around us is negative. Mm -hmm. um, very little positive. Not everything's negative, but very little positive. You have to find the positive. Mm -hmm. um, but being, so, you know, you, you get on your phone and, you know, social media, there's a lot of negativity and things like that. So it's hard to shift out mm -hmm. of that mindset. And I think not to be like relentlessly positive and think that things are always going to go perfectly. You just have to temper yourself and understand that, you know, you do have control over the things that you can control, but if something goes wrong, trying to reframe it and just see like, what did I, what did I learn from that? Even though it wasn't the outcome that I had hoped for or things worked out differently, you kind of start to realize that it's okay. Like I was telling Trina before we started, um, we just ended up like knocking a wall down in our yoga studio, even though we only opened a couple months ago. I just didn't think it through. Um, I didn't, again, I didn't really know what I was doing. So this was kind of a, 
a slap in the face in a way or just like a wake up call that yeah you can't just say like this is going to work out and things are going to be like perfect so um, we had ended up having two rooms in our studio we wanted to have two different studio spaces and it ended up not working out at all like it was too noisy we couldn't do things at the same time so we were just wasting half of our space so um, this was a, a huge lesson for me because I had a lot of resistance to this. I didn't want to knock a wall down. I thought it was way too early um, in the game to be making any kind of significant change. But as I started to try to put things in a more positive light for myself, it was just so infectious. Everyone at the studio, all the students were so excited. Um, we turned it into like a huge thing. Some of our students ended up coming and helping us like do the actual labor and the actual work. So. If I had been still stuck in that frame of mind that it was a bad thing or it was too soon or anything like that, it just would have been a negative experience for everyone. But the way that it worked out, um, people saw it as a really positive thing. They got super excited. They started coming to class all the time. They were really just pumped about the space. So it's just interesting that when you when you do see things in that light of that it's going to be advantageous to you as opposed to it's a huge burden or it's something you can't do or this and that, that things change. Yeah, you definitely, you use very little of your mind and if you change or mm -hmm. use more, like mm -hmm. you can stimulate other areas of your brain right. and accomplish so much more than you think right. you can. But if you set limits on yourself, um, other people are going to, Mm -hmm. set limits for you as well yeah. so you kind of have to break down those barriers absolutely they, they react to you and it's just mm -hmm. I mean you even react obviously to the things you say to yourself so it's natural that other people feed off your energy too and I don't know it's true and I would never have believed that had I not just had this experience like I had heard all this before I've always been a reader I've always liked to learn. Um, when I went through teacher training, I mean, we learned about a lot of, of this type of thing, but I had just never seen it in action. I had never experienced um, the way that it feels to actually accomplish something just based on the way you think about it as opposed to the actual work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then as you start to see those positive changes and those shifts, it becomes easier to do the work because you know, like if I do this and this is how I feel, I feel happier about it. Um, it's gonna it's gonna work out in a more beneficial way. Yeah, and positive energy breeds mm -hmm. positive energy. For sure. Like our students are so nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. So you're talking about like um, in your mindset, changing your mindset mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So what was like the biggest or the most difficult? However you want to answer. Yeah. The biggest or most difficult strong like mental stronghold in your life in your mind mm -hmm. that you had to turn into a castle. Um. For me, just I think thinking that it was going to be difficult and thinking that my life was going to be, and this is how I felt at first, that this is going to completely change my life and I might not like it. Like maybe I went through all of this and all this hard work and everything and that once I get there, I'm not going to like the outcome. So I had like a hard time at first. It made me a lot busier actually, which I knew would happen. Um, but really and truly, like as I started to meet with people that I needed to talk to, it gave me so much energy that I had never, I always thought I was introverted, like my whole life I always saw myself as an introvert, so I thought that would be my biggest struggle, was getting out of like my introverted box and being able to reach out to people, but I actually found that it was easy, so that kind of fueled me too. But I think just thinking, like being afraid, like I had that fear that once I make all these changes, um, I'm still going to be the same person, and I might not like like I might not like it. So, does that answer your question? Yeah. So, um, the mindset that you had to change for this certain situation, mm -hmm. would you say that that mindset is now the default for every other decision you go to? I wouldn't say it's the default, but I would say that I think about it with every decision I go to. So, even if I don't automatically think like yes. Things are gonna, I'm definitely gonna make it to work on time even though I'm running late, but I'm thinking, you know, but I do think to myself, like how can I turn this into a good lesson for myself as opposed to just being mired down and thinking like, because I had this bad five minutes, the whole rest of my day is gonna be bad. Because I was, you know, I think we all do that to an extent. If your day starts out like on the wrong foot or whatever, you just think your whole day is ruined. But it just made me think more. It made me more cognitively, I guess, aware of the way my thought processes were actually making my day better or worse. So, yeah. Do you do meditation? I do. I think of it more as my yoga practice yeah. than my meditation. Yeah. I'm yoga not, I don't like sit in stillness that often, but I practice a lot, so yeah. that, that helps me. 
there. I, I know um, getting out of that negative rut, like you're talking about like snapping yourself mm -hmm. out from having something bad happen mm -hmm. to you and trying to just snap out of it, mm -hmm. um, it it's not easy. No. Because you, first of all, you have to recognize that there's something happening that's affecting you internally and externally. Right. And then you have to figure out how you can snap yourself out of it. Right. And sometimes um, meditation helps. I'm mm -hmm. just putting out different ways. Um, music, yeah. putting on some of your favorite music and just jamming mm -hmm. for five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, for some people, it might be running, yeah. you know, jumping, oh, yeah, running doing anything, just about right. anything. Right. Just something that's going to break the habit mm -hmm. of what you're doing right now. And what you're doing at that moment is negative. Mm -hmm. So if you can find something that's going to break that habit for 30 seconds mm -hmm. to a couple minutes, then it can snap you out and it will almost shift your mind sh mindset to find a resolution. Right. Because there's no resolution when you're stuck in negativity. The only resolution is more negativity. Yeah. So. And yeah. you have to admit that you have control, which we can yeah. be like really resistant to. Like I had to, it was hard for me. You have to, to take ownership to say like, yeah, I, I own this and yeah. I have control over the way that I feel. And in that case, I have control over what's happening to me, which was difficult. I mean, especially at work, like my nursing job, like a lot of times I just feel like my day's completely out of my control. There's absolutely right. nothing I can do to like get this back together. But I did realize that like when I come in there thinking this is gonna be awful and I'm automatically just expecting you set the worst up for failure, that yeah. then little things will happen along the way to make it like worse and right. worse and worse. So yeah. Yeah. I did find that. All right. Anybody have any questions? I appreciate all that Nicole has shared with us. Let me step back in here. So, yeah. Does anybody have any questions or anything else? Any comments? Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you so much. I'm so proud that you were able to um, share with us because mindset, I think mindset is so important. Yeah. I'm sure you I know. Yeah, yeah, and with my kids, um, I, I have this whole theory about multiple personalities mm -hmm. um, and how each one of us carries multiple personalities. And sort of that mindset is you function from one personality the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. So about 90% of the time you are functioning from your comfortable personality, right. which might not be the most, the best personality for you. So um, in my blog, The Healthy Me, I'm gonna be talking about how you can create that person or that mindset that you want to be and incorporate that person into your being so that that's the person you function from. Mm -hmm. And then you ultimately have multiple personalities that come up in situations that you might need to call upon mm -hmm. to get the job done. So yeah, that's kind of, yeah, <laughs> kind of a fun thing. So anyway, thanks for joining us. Um, thanks, Nicole, Thank for you. sharing thanks with so us. Much. And um, we will see you next week on Working Wednesday. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>